Is it possible to live without Wi-Fi? What does a Wi-Fi free home look like? This is a new episode of the Smarter Tech Podcast where you find the good, the bad, and the ugly sides of technology. My name is Nick, the EMF Guy Pinot. I'm the author of the 2017 The Non Tinfoil Guide to EMFs. Part of my work is talking about EMF, EMF reduction. How can we reduce our exposure to EMFs? What are EMFs? Electromagnetic fields that are brand new to your biology. One of these EMFs is called Wi Fi. Everyone has it these days. Does it mean it's safe? Well, if you've been following my work and my videos, you know that it's not. And this is the reason that we decided, my wife and I, to forego Wi-Fi, to turn off the Wi-Fi altogether back in 2017 as we were getting ready to conceive a child. And we were planning to become parents. And at that point, we decided based on, of course, my work and uh, also my wife's um, assessment of the situation, being pregnant for the first time and looking at, well, you know what, we know that EMFs can have some detriments in adults. We're talking about sometimes um, immediate um, negative results such as brain fog or headaches in some people or skin rashes or even depressive symptoms and anxiety which is a little bit more of a long-term thing that can develop and there are risks to fertility as well uh, in men and women and there are long-term cancer risks in adults so that's not good right and when it comes to children what are the risks well if you look at websites such as the uh, Baby Safe Project, for example, I can share my screen for a second here. Let me see. Click, click. There you go. The Baby Safe Project is um, is one of these projects that is extremely credible um, because it's headed by uh, actual scientists, you know, like Hugh Taylor at Yale, who's one of the top in uh, in what he does. He's a chair of the Department of uh, Obstetrics, Gynecology, and Repro Reproductive Sciences at Yale University School of Medicine. Uh, with a team of researchers, he looked at a different, he, he ran different rat studies, and basically what he said is that, well, we should minimize our exposure. And while we wait for the scientific process to provide us with a deeper understanding of the issue, well, what should we do? Well, we should approach this with the precautionary principle, especially during pregnancy. So yes, there are some areas of science here and you can just type, you know, baby safe project, uh, project dot org to find that. But basically, the science is already showing concerns in the sense that we have large epidemiological studies showing a possible correlation, not necessarily causation, but a correlation between cell phone use during pregnancy and then the risk of your children um, having more uh, ADHD, ADD type behaviors and also allergies environmental allergies or food allergy i cannot recall uh what the the science was there but i can link to a few of these studies and the baby safe project of course but basically when we don't have the full data the full extent of the damage or the risks it's good to start lowering your exposure anyway because what could happen really what's the downside of lowering emf exposure well, in many situations, it's a bit of convenience. And this is what we've done turning off Wi-Fi. A lot of people ask us, well, how do you do this? My God, is it even possible to live without Wi-Fi? Well, let's look at, does it make a difference before I tell you how we do it? Because a lot of people, when I tell them, you know, you can turn off Wi-Fi at night or I turn off my own Wi-Fi all the time, which is what we do. We don't have Wi-Fi at all. Hold on a sec. So does it matter? Because my neighbors also have Wi-Fi. And that's really a question that is difficult to think about in a, a lot of people's mind because they don't know how EMFs act. Well, basically, EMFs are emitted near a source, the wireless, um, let's say in Wi-Fi in that case. And it's stronger near that source. It's way stronger, more intense. So the risks 
it's not as linear as 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 I'm explaining it at the moment because it's not a a linear curve between intensity and damage. But let's for the argument's sake, generally speaking, you do not want to be in high intensities all the time. So the Wi-Fi you're getting from your neighbor could be said to be less dangerous than your own Wi-Fi. And the simple experiment is this. A lot of people who turn off their own Wi-Fi sleep better, even if then their neighbor does not uh, do not necessarily turn off Wi-Fi at the same time. Good luck making your neighbors turn off Wi-Fi. If they're educated, maybe, but it's a, it's an uphill battle in, nowadays. So because we don't know what is the safe level of wireless radiation, and because our safety guidelines are based on the wrong assumptions, some of these assumptions are that a low, um, basically just a few minutes is sufficient to assess the safety or lack thereof of this agent called wireless radiation. That's completely wrong. Another one is only thermal effects matter. All the non-thermal effects that are um, subtle effects that are basically that show themselves over years with chronic exposure do not matter. That's another big bogus problem with our safety guidelines. And I'm going to link to a paper by the ICBE group, which is in my mind the most important group around the world, doing a um, very good job of doing an independent review of the science and what is wrong with our safety regulations when it comes to wireless and other types of EMS. So based on that, if we do not know what is the safe level of wireless radiation, what should we do? Well, we should follow what's called the ELARA principle, which stands for as low as reasonably achievable. This is a principle that's used with x-rays or nuclear radiation with this type of radiation that's called ionizing. And I won't get into all these definitions. I, I don't think, I think it's beyond the scope of this argument. But all that to say is that we should apply this principle to wireless as well, as low as reasonably achievable. So following that principle, if you turn off any source, you're better off than, you know, not turning them off. So if you don't need something or you can forgo using this or that wireless source, you will follow the LRA principle as low as reasonably achievable. For us, it was reasonable to turn off Wi-Fi altogether. And how can you do that? Well, the first thing you need to think about is that in certain routers, in certain Wi-Fi routers, there are multiple antennas that need to be turned off. And it's not in all situations that you can actually turn these antennas off. So I have a video I'm going to put on screen here of how I'm turning off Wi-Fi. So basically, you go in the admin setting of your router. And once you're in, and just last pass, last pass just popped right there. Once you're in, there will be a menu. So it will vary depending on what company you have. I have eBox here in Canada, but you have multiple channels. One of them is 2.4 gigahertz. One of them is five gigahertz. And sometimes you might have multiple networks as well. So I have like the primary network, the gas network, and I even have a video network, which I, I have no idea why it's there. So that's just an example in how it looks inside my router. You can turn off all of these settings and just make sure that they're off and then verify your work. If you own an EMF meter, such as, uh, for example, the SamProtect 33 that I recommend everywhere. It's on my website. It's going to be in the show notes. If you have that, you can verify your work. You can put it on or you can look at the wireless coming off of your Wi-Fi. And if you find that it still emits something, you can you can conclude, OK, well, there's an antenna that I forgot to turn off and, and, and so forth. So make sure that you actually turn off all antennas. Hey, I need to interrupt this podcast for just a second. I want to tell you about one of the EMF protection or health supporting products I really believe in and which help finance the costs associated with this show. One of the very best ways to know for sure what kind of EMF radiation levels you're being exposed to at home or at work is to hire what's called an EMF mitigation specialist. And some of the very best specialists in this type of work in North America are Brian Hoyer and his team from Shielded Healing. And 
here's what's uh, what shielded healing can do for you they can come to your home they take emf readings uh using professional level equipment that is and they identify the worst sources of emfs that you can turn off and help you create a safer calmer and health supporting bedroom and entire home uh, Brian has personally mitigated the homes and offices of the very best functional medicine doctors in the world like Dr. Ben Lynch, Dr. Joseph Mercola and many others and he's always at the cutting edge of the latest mitigation strategies including how to shield against 5G. To learn more about shielded healing and if Brian's team might be doing consultations in your area soon mainly in the US, just go to theemfguy.com slash shielded healing and you can use the coupon code SMARTER at checkout to get 10% off a consultation or shielding materials. That's SMARTER at checkout for 10% off. And remember, creating a cleaner EMF environment at home is an investment you're making towards your long-term wellness and happiness. Okay, back to the podcast. And then the next step is using Ethernet cables that will connect your different devices to your router, right? Because the router still works. The router still has the internet, except it's not sending it wirelessly to your devices. It can be wired. So, of course, on your cell phone, the first step is a cell phone, right? I'm going to start the video at the same time here. Uh, let me just review right here. So, with the phone... Here's an iPhone that I connected basically with a converter between Ethernet and the lightning port on an iPhone. It's very simple. You just plug and play. You're going to see under settings, you're going to see the word Ethernet show up. And then the same can be said under Samsung or other models, except you're going to have to have the right converter. I'm going to link to a converter um, on Amazon, but any electronic stores will hold these ethernet to the port that your phone uses it might be usb-c it might be light lightning it might be something else so if you use a tablet for example i have an example of a video i'm going to put on screen with my tablet here's the tablet that we use sometimes amazon uh kindle fire i think so basically the dongle again i call it a dongle or a converter is between ethernet and USB-C in that case. So it's essentially the same you can also use for a phone. So the Ethernet cable goes in your router. And of course, you can run these cables in the corridor. It's slightly annoying, of course. But once you're done with the, the machine, you're done with your internet session or gaming session or just social media session, you can just roll the entire thing in the corner of uh, the living room, not to annoy everyone in your household. But you can also hire an IT company that runs these cables in your walls. And that's even better. Having Ethernet ports everywhere in every room, in bedrooms, in your living room, in your office environment, for example, is the bare minimum. And it can be done for, of course, it's, a, it's an investment. I would think a few hundreds to a few thousand dollars if it's a large home. But if you're building a new construct, this is the time really to put the, these cables in and make sure that everything is wired up. And even with these steps, if you if you run the the wires in the walls, you can still open Wi-Fi if you feel like it. I don't recommend it. But if you have guests over and they want Wi-Fi, you can use Wi-Fi. But it's not the one day where you open Wi-Fi that matters the most. Remember that. A lot of people freak out when they start getting into EMFs. They start thinking about the dose of EMFs they're getting. This is your overall cumulative exposure that matters the most. Not the one day where you open Wi-Fi for gas if you feel like it, but the 364 other days where you don't. Now we're talking about a great reduction in exposure. Something else you can do is for your laptop. This is how it looks for my wife's... Um, basically dongle she has like a, a multi-plug thing where you have multi, you have a regular usb you have usb c you have ethernet she plugs everything in there including ethernet and then it goes in the usb c hover mac laptop so again on a laptop on a desktop computer you find the right converter if you do not have this native ethernet port on it a lot of desktop computer might have it but most laptops these days do not have such a port 
So what should you do? Well, you purchase this converter and you wire up your workstation. It is very valuable to wire up your workstation, especially if you stay in one place. A lot of people are on Wi-Fi just because it's the new reality for a lot of people. It's the new default. They don't think twice about it. But here's the thing with wired. It's faster. It's more reliable. I'm on wired right now recording this. And if I was on Wi-Fi on the router you just saw, it would be very slow, choppy, and the image quality would be deteriorating. So in reality, in the scope of my work, it was actually a big benefit to be wired just when it comes to quality of the information that's going through the cable because it's much more stable than Wi-Fi. So let me look to my notes in case I forgot something. I did talk about how to wire your um, computer, tablet, phone. There's nothing to be installed on your phone when you do um, things like that. You don't have to install a special software, at least when it comes to Apple products, it's uh, native. And then on computers, they're all compatible with Ethernet. It will still exist in the future because in many situations, if you have workstations and companies, you want that um, you want that wire there for the transfer of information. And if you go and look at servers, they're they're all wired. It's not like servers or large computers that do a lot of calculations. It wouldn't really work with, over Wi-Fi. We need cables. So the cable idea is a bit, some people think it's old school or old school or retrograde, but in the end, what you're doing is that you're aiming to minimize your EMF exposure. What it can do to your body? Well, minimize the risk for your kids and for you. We're talking about potentially lower oxidative stress, better sleep, things like that. It matters a lot. And anecdotally speaking, a lot of people I talk to that start doing these action steps. Maybe they start by turning off Wi-Fi at night, but eventually they go all in and they, they turn it off most of the time and go with Ethernet cables. They feel better. They have more energy at the end of the day. And this is this is anecdotal. I don't have a good quantification for you there, but when it comes to my own work, if I work on Wi-Fi, I'm more likely to get brain fog compared to not working on Wi-Fi. So that's just me and you're going to have to find what works for you. But if you want to minimize risks for your kids and for your family, if you can turn off Wi-Fi more often than not, I think that this is a smart thing to do. I hope that you like this episode. And as always, if you um, like this content, please share it with everyone you care about. It might be with your family, your friends, your neighbors, everyone in between. And if you like this episode, well, make sure to support our podcast sponsors. You're supporting companies that are industry leaders in EMF protection and health that do products that actually work and they actually care about what they're selling. And you're also supporting my work as a 100% self-financed citizen journalist. So take care and I hope to see you in the next episode of Smarter Tech. Bye-bye. In case this wasn't already obvious, the information provided in this podcast is not intended to replace medical advice. We always recommend that you review this information with a functional medicine practitioner or environmental medicine doctor who is up to date with the latest information on the dangers of EMFs and the best practices around electro hypersensitivity, just to name these two things. And if you want to support my work, please consider sharing this episode with people you care about. You can also also invest in my book, courses, or recommended products found at theemfguy.com. Thank you.